Hey guys, this is Kelly from Sevens Emporium, and today we're going to talk about making coloring pages. There are several different fabrics that you can use for this. You can use either a white marine vinyl, which I have here. You can use the white felt that's topped with a layer of clear vinyl, or you can use the chalkboard fabric. The construction of all of them is fairly simple and pretty much the same, except this one because it has the layer of vinyl on top. Um, but we're going to go ahead and make one of these and I'll show you the exact steps that are involved in this. As far as the clear vinyl goes, you kind of have a couple of choices as to what gauge of vinyl that you get. That's a common question that I get, how thick should my vinyl be? I went to Joanne and I looked at the colors of the paper that are in the vinyl. And you can use either an orange, which is 8 gauge, you can use a teal or a green, whatever you want to call it, and that's 12 gauge. Or you can use up to a yellow, which is 16 gauge. And if you get over the 16 gauge, it's really heavy and it's kind of overkill for the coloring pages. It's not really needed. If you get below the 8 gauge, in my opinion, I think that's a little too light because it's a little too stretchy on the page. And I don't think that it holds up as well to coloring. Kims are kind of rough on things, so... I, I think that's a little too soft for these. The first step in doing your, your prep, I already have my, um, my tearaway stabilizer. You want just a medium weight tearaway stabilizer for this. I've gone ahead and hooped that. I have my felt for this already cut. And I have my clear vinyl. And I'm not sure if you can see, but it's sort of wrinkly from being kind of rolled up in my bin. So the first thing I'm going to do is to iron this to make sure that it's nice and flat and smooth. Otherwise, it's not going to lay on the page very well. And when it stitches, it'll have these wrinkles in it and it's going to be kind of, kind of hard to color on it. It just won't look very good. So I'm going to cover this with just a piece of cotton fabric that I have. And I have my iron set to about a medium temperature. And I'm just going to kind of go over this and try to get some of those wrinkles to let go. Now I have, if I have a whole bunch of vinyl that I'm trying to do at once, you can put it in the dryer just briefly. Um, when I get this warm, I kind of try to spread it out a little bit and move it to a section that's maybe not so hot and kind of let it cool while I kind of hold those wrinkles out. Um, back to what I was saying, you can put it in the dryer for a few seconds to get it warm if you've got a bunch of it. Be careful doing that because especially on the thinner gauge, it will wrinkle um, and stick to itself in the dryer and that's not very good. Then you're, it's going to be probably worse than when you started. If you, um, I have really big sliding glass doors in my office and sometimes I will take the vinyl and kind of stick it to the window and just let the sun kind of warm that up um, and that will actually does a pretty decent job of getting the wrinkles out. I have in, in a fix, I have actually taken it out to my car and put it on the hood of my hot car and just for a few seconds and that actually will will help flatten your vinyl. I That's probably not a very good recommendation but that's what I did. You're also going to want to make sure that you don't have, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there was some stuff glitter I think on this. Especially on the side that's going to go next to your felt. You want to be sure you get all the stuff off of it. Um, if you want to lint roll that or whatever you want to do just to get all of that stuff off because once it's sewn on you can't go back and if you've got something stuck all over the back of your clear vinyl I'm wiping it off on the leg of my pants actually because that's my favorite thing um, but once it's under there you're gonna see it and then you're not gonna be able to get it off later I'm still not sure if I've gotten it all but we'll say that I did for now so we can move on Alright, so as I said, 
I already have my stabilizer hooped. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with this. You'll see on the coloring pages that there are usually four steps. The first step will be a placement mark for this. Step two is going to stitch the design. Step three is going to sew the back of the page on. And the reason that the page has a back is because otherwise it wouldn't look very nice when you turned the page. It would be kind of yucky. Um, and I also think if you, we're going to go over in another video, we're going to go over double sided pages, but if you have a single sided page and you leave the back um, where it is just blank, that kind of gives the kids some free drawing space, so that's nice. Um, but the fourth step in your page is going to stitch your holes in it. And you can skip that if you want to, if you just wanted to make kind of cards or whatever. You could do that, but the holes are marked out for you if you if you want to put the holes in it. I'm going to go ahead and put on my felt. I'm skipping that placement step with this, and I when I stitch it out, I will skip it as well. Because if you're making a single-sided page, and you run that placement step on top of your fabric, when you go to put the back on, it may not line up exactly the same just because you have extra fabric involved and you know the, your design has stitched and all those things so if I am just making a single sided page I skip step one completely so I'm pretty sure that my felt isn't going to move around the old directions when I first started doing these I said that if you wanted to you could stitch your design on here and then add your vinyl and and then stitch your outline and that way your stitches are all underneath your vinyl and I have changed my idea on that at first I thought that was the best way to do it and now I really don't think that it is just because if you stitch on top of the clear vinyl when you make either of the other pages your stitches are exposed and people seem to like having that barrier there, the stitch barrier. Um, you're probably going to be stitching in black, so it's not really going to discolor it or anything like that. If you're stitching in white, it probably, as you can see, he's got some little pink on him. But it's a coloring page, and I think that that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I am going to use a little bit of tape to make sure, because vinyl is slick, and I'm going to make sure that it doesn't scoot around because if it gets scooted then it makes a big ugly wrinkle that you can't get out. So I'm going to tape this down. Now I am going to pause the video and I'm going to go stitch out my design and then we're going to talk about putting the back on this page. Okay, I'm back and I have this all stitched out. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, trimming some stitches. Sometimes on these designs, I will purposely leave these connected because there's such tiny areas that I find, and I have a six needle, but sometimes it's a little finicky and it has trouble with tying in and tying off and sometimes it'll sort of drop the thread and I don't like that. I find it easier to just, and I have some of these really cool, they're called snippies and I love them, um, but I find it easier just to be able to go in there and do that than it is to fight with the machine. And I get that all done. Something else that happens sometimes, um, and it didn't happen on this exactly, but um, well, I say like right here where her little nose, I got that a little short. Now I can either go back in here and clip this off a little bit more and get it a little shorter. Or if I have something like that or, oh, here's one, where when it tied in, it left a little bit of a loop. I have this and some people call it a Nordic needle and some people, um, it's actually packaged as a snag nabbit. 
I love this. I'm not sure. I'll try to hold it up here where you can see it. It has... I'm terrible with video. Sorry about that. This part of the needle is smooth. And starting right here, it's really rough. And what happens with that is... I can hold this where you can maybe see it. Right here, I have a loose thread. I can't, I can't really show you, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. If you will put this needle right where the hole of that is, and you put it through there, when you pull that through, it will completely pull that loop through to the back and you won't be able to tell that that was ever there. And I'm going to do the same thing on her little nose where I made my little my little trim. And now that is completely pulled through. Um, and that's how sometimes you can sort of save things even if it's not a coloring page. If you have one of these snazzy little grabby needle things I use this thing all the time and I absolutely love it. So we're going to put the back on our page and look and see if maybe your clear vinyl moved a little bit or maybe it's cooler now and it's a little a little bit more bumpy. That looks a little bumpy to me and I want to make sure that I keep that nice and flat. I'm going to go ahead and double check that. I really should start storing my vinyl differently if it's going to be all crazy like that. What you're going to do, and you've done it on the front, but I didn't, I didn't say it. What you're going to do is float your fabric on the back. And all floating means is that you are putting fabric in your hoop, but it is not actually hooped. It is just floating or laying on your stabilizer. So. You have a couple choices with how you can secure this on the back. Um, if you are going to be doing a page that isn't going to have a back, um, it's not going to have a design on the back. I would suggest putting a layer of clear vinyl over the back of this too to protect the felt and also to give the kids their blank drawing surface. I do not suggest just leaving the back completely open like this with just the felt. Um, if you're going to be doing a double sided page, which again we'll discuss in, a ne in another video, you won't do this step at all when you make your first page. But more about that later again as I said. So I'm going to go ahead. You have a couple of options as far as putting this on here, securing this. You can either use tape, you can pin it if you pin way outside of the stitch area, but keep in mind that on these pages they take pretty much all of that space up. You can also use a basting spray if you want to, and I've kind of covered that in, in another coloring page video too, but I'll, I'll hit it again. When you're putting basting spray on to hold something like this on, you're not wanting to completely cover this surface. You're wanting just enough on there to hold it on until your back is stitched on. Because if you use too much basting spray, you can actually gum up your machine and your needle and bad things happen. So if you're going to use this, um, this is called Spray and Bond. You can use this or you can use a product that's called 505. And both of them work really great for this. Um, do not use a spray adhesive because a basting spray, basting spray, is very different than say this. Do not ever ever use this with your machine because you will mess it up in a way you're going to have to take it in for service and they're probably going to give you a good chewing. Don't do that. If you want to use this, just put enough on there to barely stick. Um, and if you can, try to spray around, you know, where you think it's going to stitch. Actually, I, I will probably spray right here in the middle because I know it's going to stitch on the edge and that kind of 
means that it'll hold it on there, but the machine will kind of go through that a little bit less. I'm almost out of this. Oh no. Just a little bit. It seemed like I put more on there than I actually did because it's barely spraying anything out. So you're going to put this on here. I was a loser and I forgot about this. I usually make them with white vinyl. So I'm going to cut my extra piece really quick. It might be a little wrinkly, but it's the back and it's a demonstration, so it'll be okay. Now with this, once again, I'm just going to tape this. I'm not going to I'm not going to use spray under the clear vinyl because you'll be able to see it. Um, when when it's stitched, it'll just look like something kind of under the under the vinyl, and that's not very good. So we're going to secure this on here, and I'm going to run the last steps, and then we'll talk about trimming and tools for that. Okay, we're back after running steps three and four. So now we have the front of our design done, and the back of our design done. We're going to unhoop this. So much tape. But that's okay. It's better to use a little extra tape and have a good product than to try to skimp on the tape and then things shifts and gets ugly and it's just not good. Alright, so the first thing that I do after I take it out of the hoop is I go ahead and tear away my stabilizer. And I guess if you wanted to, you could just cut it when you cut out the design, but I like to tear it away and that way I don't see any little bits of it in my edge. If you want to, you can use regular scissors to cut this out, um, which is fine. But if I have something, especially if I'm doing the chalkboard pages or the marine vinyl pages, or a double-sided page, which I guess technically if you were going to do the felt one, felt is much lighter than the other materials, even with the clear vinyl. It's not really as thick. but if you want something that's going to cut through a little easier and maybe if your hands are a little bit weak and you have a hard time going through layers and things like that I really really suggest getting a pair of these these are Fiskars and they are heavy duty scissors and it doesn't seem like you would have much leverage on these but if you can see how chunky these blades are on here these things are dangerous and they will definitely cut through this much easier than these and yes my scissors are sharp but this is just a whole different area because of the ratio of the handle to the blade so you can cut these out and it does you can't get quite as long of a stroke on these I guess that's what you would say um, as you can the regular scissors because the blades are not as long but it does not make your hand quite as tired especially if you're maybe prepping for a craft fair and you're making a whole bunch of these you don't want to get really tired and not be able to trim these out I try to cl to trim fairly close to the to the stitching I don't leave a whole lot of extra, but if you get too close to the stitching, you'll accidentally cut it, and then you have a ruined product. Um, another thing that you want to be sure when you do this is I have about the same amount of seam allowance on the back as I do on the front. You want to be sure you try to hold your scissors straight. Don't cut like this or this. A lot of people are tempted, and I've done it a lot of times myself, you, 
you'll cut around it and you'll say, oh great, my top is fantastic, and you turn around to the back and you have cut the seams, um, cut the stitching out, and that's because you're kind of holding it at an angle. So try to be mindful of that and make sure that it's kind of up and down when you trim this out. And when you go around the corners, try to kind of make long cuts while you turn, and that'll keep you from having corners that maybe look like the dog chewed them out or something. I've seen some people that trim stuff out and it's just not very good. Um, using scissors that are really small where you're having to chop a lot can do that, but I don't find that's a problem with these. Um, if I tried to cut it out with my little bitty ones, it would be all wobbly, but these are fine. As far as punching the holes out, um, people have actually said that they have successfully used like a paper hole punch. I've never had good luck with that. I have tried it just out of good fun. Maybe my hole punch is old. I'm not really sure, but I didn't have good luck with that. Um, a lot of people will say that they use a leather punch and I don't have mine with me right now, but, um, if you're doing something that doesn't have any kind of fabric-like substance in it, then the leather punch works great. It sometimes has a little bit of a problem with um, maybe canvas, maybe the marine vinyl, just because it kind of has that fabric-y backing on the back, um, even though the top is smooth. But they will work on that. But I like my crocodile. And it has this big chunky hole right here. And this tool has no problem regardless of the kind of fabric that you use. It doesn't look like it went out there, but it did. So you can pull that through. there you go. You got your holes. Sometimes when I cut felt, I and I'm kind of a Nazi about this, it'll have fuzzies on it and that drives me insane. Even with good clippers, sometimes that still happens. So sometimes I'll go in and trim that. Even though I was just raving about my crocodile, um, sometimes that just happens and that's okay. But that is how you make a coloring page. These are super duper easy. If you're wondering about what kind of markers to use on these, I have another video um, that I put out that will tell you that because I went through an experiment with the different types of pages and, and tried to go over what kind of markers work better, what brand works better. But that's in, like I said, it's in another video and definitely worthwhile to check that one out. So that's how you make a coloring page. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks a bunch. People have wanted to know how to sell the coloring pages. When I sold mine at a craft fair last year, I, I actually only took some of the chalk canvas pages. Um, I didn't take any of the, the vinyl, white vinyl or the felt with vinyl pages because I was kind of, they were kind of new to us and I was just trying to see what went on. But when I sold these, I put out a sample book so that they could kind of flip through and see a few of the different designs. I actually, in this book, I had a stack of all of these designs available with me to purchase so they could mix and match them. And I had them in a basket. Um, I had this book put together so they could see it and kind of play with it, color on it, and all of that. Um, the kids really enjoyed looking at it and coloring with it too when they found out that they could come to the booth and color on this, you know, and they weren't going to get it in trouble. Um, it was really great for them. Their parents could kind of look and the kids kind of colored on this and, hey, I want one of these or whatever. Um, when I packaged these up, I sold the individual pages. I sold one page with this. I have two pieces of chalk and this is actually wrapped in, when you buy the chalkboard fabric, it has 
this kind of papery stuff in it, and it actually tells some care instructions for the chalkboard fabric. So I had two pieces of chalk and two binder rings to kind of, as a book builder starter kit, I sold one page and it came with these and I sold it for four dollars and all subsequent pages that they bought were three dollars and people were buying three to four pages at a time it was right after Thanksgiving and right before Christmas so they were traveling still and so people thought oh these are great stocking stuffers or oh these are great to put in the car to go to grandma's or whatever um, and so that worked really super well for me and that those prices are for my area your area may be a little bit different than that but that is what I did with these now if I were going to sell um, the pages that required markers if I were going to sell the vinyl pages either one I would probably again package two to three markers um, you could do two to three chalks you could do two to three markers I think that's pretty fair with that um, and I might still charge, you know, four dollars for the first page and three dollars for the next pages because by the time you divide it out, the cost of the fabric isn't really that great. Um, even though you're paying more for the markers, if you wanted to kind of up it to four fifty for the first page, for example, or something, I think that that would still be okay. Um, but that's what I would I would suggest kind of starting around in that area for those. If you have some sort of display that you have put together for displaying coloring pages um, or even doodlets, if you have something great for either one of those, it would be fantastic if you would message me um, either on Facebook or on Etsy. You can go to www.sevensemporium.com um, for now, that's going to take you to my Etsy page, but you can message me there, and we'll get you connected with our Facebook group, um, or there there's a Facebook page um, for Sevens Emporium. There's also a fan group, so if you wanted to look up Sevens Emporium fan group, you could do that. We'll get you approved, get you added to the group, and you can see whenever new videos and things like that are posted, and some other great suggestions, but that way, um, once you're in the fan group, you can go ahead and just post your amazing photos of your work or maybe of your display and we can all see those and ogle your success because I, I don't really think that putting them in a basket is such a great idea but it's kind of what I had at the time so I'm, I'm searching for options as to what to do for a display for this year.